High in the Himalayas, where the mountains scrape the sky, a river is born from ancient glaciers. It begins as the Yarlung Tsangpo, winding through the heart of Tibet, revered for centuries as both a lifeline and legend. Its journey spans nations, flowing across China, entering India as the Brahmaputra, then becoming the Yamuna in Bangladesh, before merging with the Ganges and Meghna to meet the Bay of Bengal. Along its path, it sustains millions, feeds fertile plains, and shapes the cultures of three countries. Yet, in southeastern Tibet, this mighty river transforms into a force unlike any other. In the Great Bend, it plunges more than 2 kilometers in just 50 kilometers, an untamed descent through the world's deepest canyon, roaring with enough energy to light entire nations. Now, China has set its sights on harnessing that raw power through a colossal mega dam expected to generate nearly three times the electricity of the Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest and most powerful. But this engineering ambition carries a sharper edge. For downstream nations like India and Bangladesh, it raises fears that China could one day control or even curtail the vital waters that have sustained them for centuries. Today, let's delve into China's $170 billion Madog hydropower station. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. The Yarlung Tsangpo is among the planet's most extraordinary rivers. Rising on the Tibetan Plateau, it meanders east before taking a dramatic turn around the Namcha Barwa Massif and plunging into the world's deepest canyon, the Great Bend. Here, over roughly 50 kilometers, the river falls an astonishing 2 kilometers, creating a hydraulic drop unmatched in scale and intensity. Madog County lies just upstream of the Indian border in a region of steep gorges, seismic instability, and heavy monsoonal rains. It is also a biodiversity hotspot, where tropical and alpine ecosystems converge within a few horizontal kilometers. This combination of immense energy potential, challenging geology, and environmental richness makes the Great Bend both an engineer's dream and a conservationist's nightmare. Harnessing this river promises gigawatts of power, but demands construction in one of the harshest and most fragile terrains on Earth. For decades, Chinese hydropower planners have eyed the Great Bend as the ultimate untapped prize. Early feasibility studies and policy proposals date back to the 1990s, but the political and technical hurdles were daunting. The region's remoteness, volatile geology, and sensitive geopolitical position, just kilometers from a disputed border, kept the idea in the realm of ambition. That changed with the 14th Five-Year Plan, which explicitly called for exploring a massive hydropower base in the Yarlung Tsangpo. In December 2024, China formally approved the Madog project. In July 2025, Premier Li Qiang presided over the groundbreaking ceremony framing it as both a contribution to China's climate targets and a strategic infrastructure investment to encourage growth. The project's approval came at a time when China was doubling down on state-led megaprojects to revive its economy while accelerating its transition away from coal. Madog is not a single colossal dam, but a run-of-the-river cascade made up of five major hydropower stations cut across the river's dramatic two-kilometer descent. Rather than building one huge wall that floods the valley, the system works like a ladder. At each stage, water is diverted from the river into a small pool, then funneled through long tunnels, some stretching over 15 kilometers, into underground turbine halls where electricity is generated. After passing through the turbines, the water flows into another balancing pool further downstream, ready to be captured again by the next powerhouse. This process repeats across all five stations, with the water finally returning fully to the river after the last stage. When complete, Medog will have an installed capacity of 60 gigawatts and produce about 300 terawatt hours of electricity annually, roughly 13% of China's total consumption in 2024, enough to replace hundreds of coal plants. Because Tibet is far from China's main industrial hubs, Ultra-high voltage transmission lines will send this power thousands of kilometers to provinces like Guangdong and Zhejiang, helping meet peak demand and steadying grids that rely heavily on wind and solar. 
Beyond electricity, the project will boost industries such as tunneling, turbine manufacturing, and transmission technology, and could serve as a model for large-scale hydropower in mountainous regions worldwide. Building the Medog Cascade is both an engineering and logistical challenge on a scale rarely attempted. The Great Bend is one of the most remote and difficult places in the world to build a hydropower project. Before any major works can begin, crews must create access, temporary bridges, steep mountain roads, and cable systems to move heavy equipment across slopes that can exceed 70 degrees. Once access is secured, the tunneling begins. Long head race tunnels will carry water under immense pressure, so the surrounding rock must be reinforced with sprayed concrete, rock bolts, and in highly stressed areas, thick steel linings. Workers will face hazards like sudden rock bursts, when trapped stress in the rock explodes outward and water leaks from underground sources. The underground powerhouses, each around 200 meters long and large enough to hold several massive turbines, must be excavated and supported in stages to prevent collapse. Given the region's seismic activity, every tunnel is designed to survive strong earthquakes, with flexible joints, extra thick linings, and real-time monitoring to spot stress changes early. Stabilizing the slopes is equally critical. Retaining walls, anchors, and drainage systems protect entrances and access roads from monsoon-triggered landslides, which can be worsened by blasting. River diversion adds further complexity, requiring temporary dams and bypass tunnels strong enough to handle extreme floods. Weather shortens the workable year. Winters are harsh. Summers bring heavy rains. To stay on schedule, different parts of the cascade will need to be built simultaneously. Throughout, the design layers in backups and contingencies, aiming to capture the river's vast energy while keeping its immense power under control. Midog's projected cost exceeds 1 trillion yuan, financed through state-owned hydropower giants, national policy banks, and infrastructure bonds. The funding model reflects China's capacity to channel state capital into politically strategic infrastructure, absorbing risks that private investors would avoid. Groundbreaking took place on the 19th of July, 2025, marking the official start of construction. The build is expected to run through at least 2033, with early phases devoted to site preparation, geological mapping, and pilot tunnels to confirm rock conditions before full-scale excavation. Major civil works, tunneling, cavern excavation, and intake construction will advance in overlapping stages. Turbines will be installed and commissioned sequentially, allowing partial power generation from around 2030 while the remaining cascade is completed. Full commercial operation is anticipated by 2033, though in a setting as geologically and climatically challenging as the Great Bend, unforeseen rock conditions, or extreme weather could extend timelines further. The Madog Hydropower Station faces a challenging mix of environmental, engineering, and political pressures. The lower Yarlung Tsangpo Gorge is a fragile landscape with steep slopes rich in biodiversity and sensitive ecosystems. Even with small reservoirs, construction will fragment habitats and disturb wildlife while altered sediment flows could harm soil fertility and fisheries far downstream. The region's geology heightens the risks. Heavy monsoon rains, fractured rock, and seismic activity create constant threats of earthquakes and catastrophic slope failures. Tunneling and blasting can destabilize mountainsides, and monsoon-triggered landslides could endanger both workers and infrastructure. Adding to these environmental and engineering risks are deep diplomatic sensitivities. The absence of a basin-wide water treaty among China, India, and Bangladesh amplifies mistrust. Hydrological data sharing is limited and seasonal, leaving downstream nations reliant on Chinese assurances. In India, where the Yarlung Sangpo becomes the Siang and then the Brahmaputra, suspicion runs deep. Some leaders, including the chief minister of Arunachal Pradesh, have even warned that a dam of Medog scale could become a water bomb over the northeast India. Critics fear it could give China the ability, during times of conflict or political pressure, to alter or withhold flows, disrupting agriculture, 
hydropower, and the livelihoods of millions of Indians. Bangladesh, at the river's delta, fears reduced dry season flows and worsening saline intrusion, threatening agriculture and water security. China insists Madog's run-of-the-river design makes large-scale manipulation impossible. Yet, in geopolitics, perception often outweighs engineering reality. In a tense climate, even routine operational changes could be read as deliberate acts, turning a dam into a geopolitical flashpoint across South Asia. If delivered as designed, Medog will be one of the most productive renewable energy assets ever built. Its steady high-volume output could displace hundreds of millions of tons of carbon emissions, anchor China's transition away from coal, and provide a backbone of firm, renewable power to balance an increasingly variable grid. Yet its ultimate legacy will hinge on more than technical achievement. The true measure will be whether China can execute it without triggering irreversible ecological damage, and whether it can build frameworks of trust with downstream nations that turn suspicion into cooperation. In the Great Bend, gravity offers almost limitless power, but in a shared river system, that power carries responsibility. The Medog Dam will be judged not only by the electricity it generates, but by the stability, transparency, and goodwill it fosters or fails to foster in the years to come. What are your thoughts on this mega project? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.